Welcome back to the Steel Forum. Today I'm going to show you a tool that we found to be insanely useful in our workflows, the Stream Deck by Elgato. Stick around until the end of the video. We've got a great deal for detailers that are working in cloud offices or are thinking about converting their offices to the cloud that you don't want to miss. Also, if you want to get your hands on this shirt or any of our other detailer apparel, I'll leave a link down in the description. The proceeds go to support detailers that are the victims of frivolous back charges. The Stream Deck is a tool that is primarily targeted at streamers to handle tasks such as switching scenes, managing soundboards, and toggling other streaming tools. I first picked one up for my own personal use as a Twitch streamer, but I soon realized the potential of using the tool for other workflows. I started using it to help with my video editing, loading programs, managing files and folders, and running various tools in my graphics and video editing software. It didn't take long though to become obvious that we could use the Stream Deck as a tool for our business. With the SDS2's 2022 version release, the ability to create keybinds for parametric launchers meant the stage was set for us to put the Stream Deck to the test. I started small and I set up buttons for some commonly used parametrics, point location selections, and some controls for zoom. After that, I showed it to the team and they all agreed that there was a lot of potential and they really wanted to put it into production. We bought a couple stream decks for our senior staff and let them play around with it for a little bit. And each month we bought a few more and brought more people on board. At this point, everyone in the company, even our bookkeeper, has a stream deck. So let's take a look at the initial setup and some of the basics and built-in functionality of the stream deck. So the first thing you're going to want to do after you've plugged in your Stream Deck is you're going to want to visit the Elgato website and then you're going to want to go to Stream Deck and click on Software. From there you're going to select your product depending on the one that you've picked up. Pick your operating system and then go ahead and download the installer for their software. Once you've installed the software it's going to look something like this. Now the first thing that you're going to want to do is click on this little gear to take you into the preferences. Once you're in Preferences, you're looking for Updates, and also check the firmware version. If it shows that you can update, go ahead and update the firmware version first, and then check your updates. Anything you've got there, go ahead and install it. Once you get all your updates installed, you're going to come back to this main screen. This is going to be your default profile to start with, and you can kind of build from here. Just to kind of show you around a little bit, you can go in under the Profiles button, and you can create additional profiles and you can also uh, import, export, and back up your profiles if you want to do that as well. This is also where you can rename them if you would like. And you can also set up a default profile and you can even tether it to a particular application that's running so that once this is what's in the foreground, it will automatically switch to that profile if you want to do that as well. So basic preferences out of the way. The next thing we're going to look at is how do you actually add a button? So all you're going to do to create a button is just drag anything to one of these squares and that will become the button for that square. And you can delete it just by clicking on it and then clicking on the trash can to eliminate it. So let's go ahead and throw in a couple just to kind of build this up. So the first thing I'm going to do is go in under Stream Deck and we've got Brightness. So I can set my brightness here, either brighter, darker, min, max, set anything in between. I can just create that the way that I want it. Now you won't be able to see this on my actual Stream Deck, so I'm not really going to bother with it too much, but you get the idea here. So this is a button to adjust the brightness of your actual buttons. Then there's another one that I find really handy is Sleep. So this will actually put your Stream Deck to sleep. It will black out all the buttons. There's another way around this as well. You can go in under your general and you can set your sleep to be automatic after a certain amount of time that you've been idle. You can set up a screensaver as well. And you can also change your orientation and you can change your brightness here if you want to see it in particular. Now, you can, again, you can't see this, but I'm watching it get brighter and darker as I do this. One of the things you do want to remember is each of these buttons is a little LCD screen. So there is a potential for burn in issues. So that's why I like to just sleep mine whenever I'm not actually using it because I leave my machine on all the time. But if you want to set up a sleep timer to be automatic, that's fine. All you have to do to turn it back on is just poke any of the buttons and they come right back on. So the next thing we're going to look at is under navigation. We have a few different options here. One of them is really handy. This is what really allows you to expand the usage here is create folder. So I can create a folder and let's just uh, 
we'll call it buttons and you know you can even modify this as, as well you can move where that text is going to be on here you can uh, you can change the font if you want to change that you can increase the size of the font you want to underline it whatever you want to do you can even change the color of it and another nice little feature here is you can even change the icon so you just click set from file and then pick another icon if you want to make it something else and they've even got a library hundreds and hundreds of other little icons that you can use or you can grab anything that you want any small image file will work any ico or svg files those work just fine so once i click into the folder i have the ability to organize my icons even further so one of the handy things that we'll do here is we'll have parametrics or modeling and drafting we can organize this any way that we want and it gives you much more functionality than even just the amount of buttons that you have here. So another great tool within navigation is switch profile. So this one I find very handy. And for me, I like to put a switch profile button on every one of my profiles in the same spot. And then it just kicks to the next profile. You can have it pick a profile specifically if you want to. Um, we've actually got a couple of guys who have set theirs up with drafting modeling blue beam so they have a profile set for each of their program types and that navigation is just their four buttons centered in the top and it sets to specific profiles so they don't have to cycle through they just pick the exact one they want and they're on their way now you can also do the same thing with pages you can add pages onto these and here you can see i can just cycle back and forth so i'm still within the same profile but now i'm just on a different page so that's another functionality of adding more buttons to the buttons that you've got. It really allows you to expand this thing as much as you want. But I find that you really want to keep it within reason where you're not adding keystrokes to the Stream Deck in order to try to save keystrokes off your keyboard. That doesn't really help. So for me, I want to organize things by folders and I just want to drill down as quickly as possible to get to what I'm after. But, you know, wh whatever it is you want to do, you, you have the option here to navigate for it. So after navigation, the next thing we want to look at is system. So under system, we're going to have a bunch of different really useful ones here. We're going to have open, which is incredibly handy. This one I love because you can open files and folders. You can even run programs from it. So if you just navigate to the program location that you want to run, you can launch a program directly. Or if you want just a file folder location, what you do here is just once you've navigated to the folder that you want, copy that folder paste it in and put it in quotes and the quotes are very important here as well okay so i've got open folder button so when i press this now it opened on the other screen but here it is so let me just try that again there we go so now you see i have a quick way to access my folders instantaneously so if you've got folders that you use very frequently I mean, yeah, you can pin it, but there's only so many things you can pin, and you have to really remember where everything is here. You can organize that a little bit better by having them in your stream deck if there's a couple that you're using the most frequently, so you don't have to pick it out of the list. The next thing that we use quite a bit is website. We use a lot of Zoom in our, in our daily office work, and we have a couple of Zoom rooms that are always available. They're, they're perpetually recurring meetings. They, they never end. So having a website in here, you just enter in the URL for that Zoom room and with the button stroke, you're going to launch that Zoom room immediately. It enters in the password because that's all built into the, into the bookmark and it just takes you right to it. And this will automatically launch into your web browser so that you don't have to worry about opening it. It will actually launch it for you. And so now here's just a quick demonstration of that. And there we go, we're right to Google. Okay, so here's where things really start to get interesting, is hotkeys. So you can take a hotkey tool, and this will actually assign a keystroke. Now, there's a couple different ways that you can do this. One is you just click, and whatever you type, it's going to put that character in. However, if you use this drop-down, you can actually set it up to select many, many, many more buttons than that. And here's the real trick. I don't know if you're aware of this, but the Windows system actually contains 24 F keys, but modern keyboards only display 12. So by going to the F keys selection, you can have access to additional F keys. And the really great thing here is this gives you access to 12 buttons 
that most no other software is going to be listening for. So you're not going to have that annoying deal where you, you hit a keystroke and, and it's supposed to be a command and it launches something in the wrong program because a different program was listening. Have you ever had a keyboard shortcut for mute or deafen or something and you're just working away on your detailing and you press that command, that F key or whatever it is, and it manipulates your other software. This allows you to circumvent that to some extent by having these different, uh, these different keys available that most people aren't going to be using and most software is not already using. So then to go along with that, the next thing we have is text. So rather than just a simple keystroke command, this will allow you to block fill in text. And so now if I just open up Notepad and hit that button, you'll see that it's going to throw that text in for me instantly. So that demonstrates a few of the individual tasks that we can do. But what happens if we want to roll a few things together? Well, for that, we're going to have multi-action. And that is under its own standalone item called multi-action. So all you have to do is open up multi-action, drag that one to a location, and then you can combine things within it. So let's go ahead and enter in some text as our first item. And then let's add in a hotkey next to save. Okay, now you'll notice over here I have this untitled file. And it has the asterisk next to it, which means it's not saved. So if I go in here and I hit our new button, the multi-action, it is going to type it in and then execute the keystroke to save. So that's going to be a way for you to stack multiple tools together in one stroke. This is going to let you combine things where you can perform multiple actions all at once. For instance, in SDS, if you open up a label and then you tell it, hit the end key, hit enter in order to bring me down a carriage return on an existing label, type in a block of text, finger tight bolts, wire to ship, center, whatever it is, and then add in another keystroke for tab and another one for enter, it will actually type in all of that stuff in the blink of an eye and then close and save the label for you. So the label is just instantly updated and you don't have to even click in it and copy paste. It just handles it all immediately. I hope you found this information helpful. I'll be putting together some more videos to explain in detail the plugins that we use and some of our buttons specifically to help you get your own Stream Deck going to improve your productivity right away. Speaking of productivity, are you thinking about taking your detailing office into the cloud or are you already using a cloud service provider but aren't thrilled with the quality, price tag, or both? Head on over to Unite3D.com and check out our affordable, scalable cloud infrastructure built by steel detailers for steel detailers. And as a special holiday bonus for our viewers, if you sign up in the month of December, we'll boost the savings even more and waive the setup fee. I'll leave the links down in the description below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.